So how do you create a brand that truly represents who you are and the products you sell, as well as building a business that you can scale online? That is what this podcast will help you do. My name is Henry Kaminsky Jr. and welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast. Let me just make this statement loud and clear. Church is here. Church is here. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode. Oh, man, what a morning. This morning has just been insane. From clogged toilets to icy ice storms to uh, people's internet connections not working, so they, they couldn't make it to the podcast. Man, it's just been a shit show. But as I always say, the show must go on. So I'm going to spend about 20, 25 minutes with you and talk to you about how I'm growing my influence on Clubhouse and how you can too if it's a platform that you're interested in building a deeper connection with your audience with and on. So we did a, we did a room Last night, I hosted a room with Fabio Viviani. He's a celebrity chef. He's got 40 restaurants across the country in the U.S., and he's a a true rags-to-riches story. And we also had Cindy Eckert, who exited two businesses, each selling them for $1.5 billion, and then selling – and then buying them back with penny – uh, on pennies on the dollar and is continuously building and growing her brand and audience. And one of the questions that we had, let's see if we can get Cindy on the show and, and Fabio back. Um, those guys just, they, they just poured into the audience yesterday and it was a really good, good um, room. We went deep on a lot of questions and it was fun. So, one of the things that was asked of us was, what do you guys do as busy entrepreneurs when it comes to hearing about a new platform and wanting to investigate or try to get on it at infancy stages or the adaptation stages? What's your mindset around that? Is it, oh my God, here's another platform that I got to get? Uh, big on or, oh God, here's another platform. Who knows if it's going to be here tomorrow? I'm not going to bother with it. Or what's the mindset and how do you keep up with all of these freaking social media platforms? I thought that was a really good question. So Fabio was hesitant to get on it and then he got on it because multiple people were saying, dude, you got to get on this platform. Cindy, same, not so much same thing. She saw a, a, a way to really connect with their audience and build more audience. So she she embraced it and came on it and, and, and she does rooms and she gets asked to speak on panels all day long. I looked at it and said, sort of a hybrid of what's, how Cindy felt and Fabio. I was like, oh man, another platform. It's going to take away from other platforms that I'm trying to build right now, like Instagram and, and, and my podcast and things like that. And... What I told the guy was, it really comes down to a mindset, right? It really comes down to a mindset. And Cindy and Fabio and I all agreed that when Clubhouse came out, at the end of the day, we looked at the platform and said, this is another unique way to connect with our audience. This was another way to strengthen our relationship with our audience. This is another day to add value and to make people's lives better. And that's why we're all in business. So we embraced it with a open mindset, like we're gonna give this a shot and see what happens. And I've been on the platform for about a month and a half and I've created such great relationships. And really excelled the business and really built a strong audience. My Instagram audience has been growing exponentially because of it. And I've been getting a lot deeper with my own ends. So the question is, how do you grow your influence 
on Clubhouse. So a couple of things that I've done has helped me tremendously. And we're about to get into those in just one second. If you're a business owner who feels your branding isn't truly representing the value that you deliver, check out this free video training that will help you level up your brand's messaging and online presence so that you can start attracting higher quality clients. Visit www.uniquedesignswithaz at the end, not an S, dot net backslash level up my branding. So, what have I been doing to grow and build my influence on on Clubhouse? Well, the first thing that I can tell you that is creating collaborations and giving more than I'm taking. So there's other creatives out there that I've met on the platform that have mutual friends of ours, and I didn't know them until... I got on Clubhouse and they started opening up rooms. Excuse me. I just burped in your ear. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Um, So they started opening up rooms and I jumped in and I started raising my hand, getting up on stage and pouring into their audience, contributing to the conversation, asking thoughtful questions. Um, Then I started opening up my own rooms and those people started to come into my rooms and I was helping them – get their voice heard and get their questions asked and help them position their expertise and demonstrate their expertise. So we started to do these collaborations back and forth in each other's rooms. And we started to build this community on Instagram DM on WhatsApp. So I'm in a couple of these I hate to use the word pods, but these communities where it's a bunch of entrepreneurs that there's like 10 of us in each pod, right? Um, There may be a little bit more here and there, but we share each other's rooms. We contribute to each other's rooms, just like I just mentioned. And we started to build like this little family. So I have all these little separate families that I pour into. And it sounds like a lot of work, but it's not because all I do is I schedule it out on my calendar the week in advance. And for my rooms, at least. And then when I see my colleagues' rooms being published, I will block that out on my calendar. I don't look at it as a task. I don't look at it as work. I look at it as this is going to contribute to building my following, building my audience, and serving people at a, at a deep level. And so creating that collaboration was key because here's what happens. You're going to get on Clubhouse and you're going to start a room and two people are going to show up, if any at all. And you're going to say, I ain't doing this no more. This is, this is a waste of time. And then you're going to meet a colleague that's on Clubhouse and you're going to reach out to them and say, hey, I wanted to do this room about XYZ topic and I think you would be awesome to co-moderate with me or co-host with me. Would you be interested in doing that? They're going to say, yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. So then now you host room number two, but you have a co-host with you and now you see 10 people show up, 15 people show up, 30 people show up. Now, I'm I'm giving you the step by step, guys. Now, you're going to meet more people in your rooms. You're going to meet more people in other people's rooms. And you're going to reach out to them on on Instagram DM or Twitter and you're going to say, "You know, I'm doing a room tomorrow or I see you have a room scheduled for XYZ topic. I would love to participate in that." Here's my background. Here's my expertise. I think I could really provide some value here. And they're going to say, yeah, I would love to have you come on. And now you start to build this network. Now, your two weeks, three weeks goes by. You're building up your following. You're following more people because they incentivize you to follow other people because now when you're following somebody else, you could see what rooms they're in. Now you're following them into other rooms and it's sort of like a rabbit hole. Now when you go to host a room, you have four or five panelists already at the uh, already out of the gate. And now you have a couple hundred people pouring into the room 
in about 10, 15 minutes. So we hosted a room yesterday and we had Brandon Copeland from the Patriots. We had George, I forget his last name. I think it's George Mumford. He's like the mindset. He was the mindset coach for Kobe, uh, LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan. Um, he was on the panel. Um, Shay Hollenbrand, the retired MLB all the multiple, um, um, uh, I think it was two times or three time all star. We had a bunch of pro athletes on the panel, and we also had some other speakers on the panel as well that that gave their two cents from their expertise. And we had over two hundred and thirty people in that room in a matter of minutes. Now that has sparked interest, and now. The, my colleague is saying, we got to do this every week at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we'll bring in new athletes to come on the panel. I was like, that's awesome. I mean, between the between our network, we can get that going pretty quickly. So now you're building community. You're building influence. And people are really starting to recognize you as a subject matter expert. And they're associating you with these other folks. So this is how I've been able to build my influence on this platform pretty quickly. I mean, I've only been on an uh, an hour and a half, um, hour and a half, a month and a half, and we're pushing close to five thousand followers right now, and that's that's pretty quick. And I I didn't gamify the system. I didn't squat on other people's pages. I didn't go open up the the app on multiple devices and plant myself in other rooms like a lot of other people did to kind of spike their following. I didn't do any of that. I don't I don't like to cheat. I don't like to cheat because that's always going to be with me. And that just it doesn't sit well with me. So I will build organically and I I really don't care about my numbers. I care about going deep on conversation and truly helping people. And if you can come with that mindset, if you can come with that perspective, you're going to grow your influence really, really quick. But it's just like anything, guys. Business is a team sport. If you try to be the lone ranger and do it all yourself, it's going to take a long time. It's going to feel lonely. The best way to get ahead or go far is to go with a community. And I've been blessed to meet some awesome people. Now, I will tell you, it's going to take some time for you to find your tribe. Everybody's going to look like a rock star when you first meet them. Then you're going to spend time with them on the platform. And you may realize that some of the values that these people have don't align with yours. There's no right or wrong. You just now, eh, you know what? I'm probably going to go a different route. And then eventually you're going to find your tribe. So I found my tribe. There's a couple friends of mine that I haven't seen in years and and, and that I know personally that are on the, the platform. And we, we actually reconnected on the platform. And um, my one friend, Nick, he was on the show not too long ago, Nick Champagne. He does a room every morning, 7, 10 a.m. on the weekdays and 8, 10 a.m. Eastern on the weekends. Every single day. And I have committed to being a moderator in that room every single day. Every single day. And we pour in, and he's been doing it for about a month. And every day, the rooms get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we've created this family, so to speak. There's a good six of us that are there consistently every single day. And that's the that's my tribe. That's one tribe that I found. There's another guy out there, Philly Networker. Big shout out to Kalen. He was on the show not too long ago too. We connected on Clubhouse, and I brought him in to do some consulting work. Um, and we've been friends ever since. And he hosts rooms, and he has a really solid community. And I'm part of it because I align with his values. And so that's another community, right? So, and, and those, that's how you want to build and grow your influence. So I got some really cool, 
uh, quotes here from one of our live listeners, Joshua Easter, that I want to recognize. Joshua Easter says, it's about collaboration and giving more than taking. Yes, absolutely. Building community and building influence. Yes. Working on becoming recognized as a subject matter expert. Yes. And it's about conversation and helping people. Yes. Couldn't agree more. So that's how we're going to grow and build our influence on Clubhouse. So questions, comments, please, after you listen to this or if you're watching this live, drop it in the comments. I'm happy to have a quick dialogue with you uh, before we wrap up this episode. But this is a phenomenal platform because the one thing that you can't fake the, fake the funk on is your brains and your voice. Like, There's something about your voice that translates whether or not you know what you're talking about pretty quickly. And people are going to pick up on that immediately. And that's why I think there's a lot of people out there that are getting exposed and Clubhouse is actually (laughs) destroying their brand reputation. I've seen some things, you know, and it, it was just based out of fear. You know, somebody comes in and they're asking for advice and somebody says, I think I can help you. And the, the, the owner of the, uh, uh, of the room gets all butthurt and tries to push you out and shut you up because it's their room. And, you know, it, it, there's some nonsense like that going on. I haven't experienced a lot of that once or twice here and there, but over the past month and a half, I haven't seen any of it. But, you know, drama follows drama, right? So, I just steer clear of that and I've had a, a tremendously positive experience on the platform and met some really awesome people along the way. So it all depends, right? It, it, it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for trouble, you'll find it bottom line, right? But keeping this on the positive note, it's a great way to build strong relationships. And one of the things that I would recommend you do is don't pay attention to the numbers of the people in the room. I was in a room yesterday moderating, and it was 1.2 thousand people in the room. It got crowded. It got noisy. It got disorganized. People were talking over each other. I was like, you know what? I'm going to quietly leave. And I jumped into another room with like 40 people in it, and we had a great conversation. Right? So those smaller rooms... They pack a lot of value. Not that the bigger rooms don't, but you get this intimacy in the smaller rooms. So don't get discouraged about the size of the room because those rooms I've gotten the most out of, right? I've gotten the most out of. And you know what's crazy? We actually have a special guest that's going to be joining us right now. (laughs) So (laughs) this is awesome, dude. Mario, what's going on, dude? How are you, man? I'm doing awesome. So Mario was supposed to come on, and 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 he was going to be the featured guest, but he was having some technical issues with internet where he's at. So I was like, you know what? The show must go on. So I just did the damn show anyway. So the fact that I see you pop in here, that's freaking amazing. So this is going to be good stuff. Keep the show going, man. Keep the show showing. I'll, I'll jump in. I'll, I'll, we'll keep it going, whatever topic you're talking about. So we're talking about the same topic that that I wanted to share. Uh, I wanted to discuss with you, which is how to grow and build your influence on Clubhouse. I mean, you went from zero to like fifty thousand followers and these massive rooms with Ty Lopez and these Les Browns and I mean crazy names in like two weeks. So I wanted to have you share with the audience, like. How did you strategize that? How did that all come about? Yeah. Um, okay. I'll tell you the basics, man. First, you can hear me okay. You can see me okay. You, you sound a little low. Is there any way you could turn up volume? Um, let me see if I just turn off my Bluetooth, turn it back on if it works. Hold on. All right. Is it, is it better now? Or yeah. Not? 
You're much louder. Oh, cool, cool. All right, so we'll do it without the Bluetooth. It's not working the Bluetooth. So so that's good right now like this, yeah? Beautiful. Oh, perfect, perfect. All right, man, so we could talk about the basics. The basics are um, just going in different rooms. You put your hand up and you speak. That's the basics. And so you start in smaller rooms and then you move your way up as you get more followers. Um, and number two, you create your own room. You give value consistently. I'm sure you've spoken about this. Many have because I did those things. This is the basic. You create your own room. You give value consistently. And then you have to learn how to run a room. You, know, you have to keep it on topic, interrupt when needed because people will try to abuse it to try to get their attention, uh, to try to get followers themselves. You have to control the room yourself. But the thing that not many people talk about is the networking, the connections you build with larger influencers. That's been my my main focus. Now, I've reached out to all those big names. If you have a podcast like you do, Henry, that's perfect. Anyone that has a podcast, they would invite them as a guest. I've been invited on many podcasts as a guest. I'm doing them now because obviously my account is having issues. But before that, I wouldn't have time to do them. So um, connecting with those big names, bringing them to your room, hyping it up, they're creating a lot of hype and then bringing them all at once. We'll give it that initial boost. A lot of people will come in, we'll give it those followers. Bigger influencers will see it. They'll drop in, we'll give it more followers, um, and, and it becomes, you know, they can leave later. Those moderators can then leave, but they've given you that initial audience to then build up your room and leverage that audience to give them value and, and to keep them there. Um, so that will be one source, one secret source not many people talk about. And the other one, let, we'll finish that one, and I've got one more after it. But did you have any questions on that one? What do I, you think? I did. What does that look like behind the scenes? I know you have a, a, a team of admins and things like that, but there may, be, there may be people watching or listening to this that don't have that support, right? They, they don't have that admin support. So what does that look like behind the scenes when you're reaching out to these bigger names to get them to come on a future, come into a future room and ha- have you feature them? They came... They care about followers. If you tell them, hey, this room is going to be the best, if you hype it up, they'll want to come in early because they want to be at the top with those that little green badge, the moderator badge that everyone wants. So if you say this room is going to be the best, you know, I've got some big name plans uh, to drop in. Now, obviously, with my room, the round table, it's, it's already got that reputation. So people will drop in anyway. But in the early days, it didn't. So I'd have to say, hey, we have a lot of big names coming in. I'm sure you'd want to jump in so you can be a moderator early and, and be next to me at the top. Um, so they, they would all jump in early and that gives it their boost and then others will just follow suit. Um, and I do have a team. Like I've got a team of, what, seven, eight? I used to get, man, easily over 500 DMs a day, six, 700 DMs a day. It was insane. Um, so I had a team responding to all those DMs. I had a team, all they did was connect to influencers, connect to those people with a big following. That's literally all they did. They would jump on calls, build those relationships. Um, those relationships off the platform are worth a lot. And then the last thing I did was connect with people that have connections to celebrities. You know, the day I got my account suspended temporarily was the day I was going to interview Randy Zuckerberg, for example. So I had, um, other than the celebrities you're dropping in, I had a lot booked in advance. You know, I, that the next day I had Jay Abraham. The next day I had Kevin Harrington. He's been there a few times. Um, I had a few other sharks drop in. I think I have three sharks drop in. So there's some celebrities will just drop in for the fun of it. Um, others you'd want to schedule in advance and make a room for them. You know, when I when I interviewed uh, Naveen Jain, the billionaire, for example, so he had to be scheduled in advance as a special guest. Got it. This is awesome stuff. So you, you're reaching out. You you have a team of people reaching out and saying, "Hey, we have a large clubhouse room, or we have a clubhouse room that's getting a lot of momentum right now. We would love to feature you as a as a." as a celebrity guest or an influencer guest and they're they're chewing that up right now. Exactly. Got it. Done. Okay. Let's get to let's get to the other thought that you had in regards to growing and building your influence. I talked about collaboration before on on the basic level collaboration. You 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 hosting rooms and bringing people in and 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 co-hosting with you and vice versa. So I I don't want to over overdo that. So you know, just wanted to share that with you. So what was the second thought that you had or second tip? Yeah, co-hosting is really good. So you you have you do a, you jump into someone else's room and then they jump in yours. Um, I didn't want to mention this, but you kind of reminded me. What we started doing recently is partner with other rooms. So they have a room, smaller rooms. They would bring their audience to mine when they finish, and then I'd give them a shout-out in my room. So I had a lot of rooms merging into mine, and then they get a shout-out in my room. So they get that support there. Um, now, the other point I wanted to mention is the title of the room. I think a lot of people 
don't value the title of the room. That makes a massive difference. There's some people that have a very small audience. They don't have a lot of people in there and uh, uh, don't have many followers, but they get the right title. And then just, it just hooks people in. People love that title. And I've had someone, that, his name is David. You probably saw him. I've got his last name. But he created his first room, had over 600 people. And he's a pretty small fish. But the title was good. Me and Summit, who, we run a lot of rooms together. He supports me a lot. We did a room. Um, and one, so I, had, I didn't have 50,000 subscribers, followers yet. I had like, what, 30,000? And we did a room, 20, 30,000. We did a room. We called it something, you know, growth hacking, blah, blah, blah. Because I've got a, I'm a growth hacker. I've got a team of growth hackers. I love growth hacking. And we had like 20, 20 30 people join, which is so freaking low in the first five minutes. And then we just closed it. It's, it's a test. So it was a test. We're testing different things. We closed the room. We do this. We used to do this every night. We opened a new one and we called it something else, a new room with like a love heart and stuff. We had over 200 people in the first 10 minutes. All we did was change the name. The name makes a big difference. Not sure if the algorithm prefers certain names, but I know that people get hooked to certain names more than others. What What would you recommend you consider when you're developing a name for the room? I would look at other, because it, it, Clubhouse is a pretty unique algorithm what people get hooked up to, hooked into. So you gotta, first you gotta, if you're good at copy, that gives you an edge. Mm-hmm. Copywriting is everything, whether you're doing email, ads, talking to people, um, and of course naming rooms. Um, but another little trick, and, and a lot of them do, is just look at names that are already working and then try to uh, use them and leverage those to try to build on that. So if one is working, it's like growth hacking your personal brand. Uh, you can do another one, say growth hacking your personal brand to get more followers or growth hacking your personal brand on Clubhouse. So use one that's already working and then added something to it. Uh, but I did it differently. Like I built a brand called The Round Table. Everyone knows me as the guy behind The Round Table. And then that was my brand. Instead of, and then what I do is I call it The Round Table. And then the second section was always trying different copy, different ideas like pitch your business or high achievers on, on mindset, etc. So don't be afraid to test. You have to test. You have to test. But then don't just test from scratch, which is also good. But a good thing to do is look what's already working. And then, so like Warren Buffett says, learn from other people's mistakes. Look at what's already working and iterate from that instead of iterating from nothing. Yeah. And starting from scratch and trying to figure it all out yourself. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I, I got some questions for you that I, I, I prepared. Um, what's, what's, what's motivating you right now? Because it sounds like you're really at the peak and pinnacle of your clubhouse game right now, despite the the temporary suspension uh, and and technical difficulties. What What's motivating you to keep going? That's a good question because, you know, for if you understand yourself, it gives you an edge in life. So there's a lot of personality tests and quizzes you could do. I've, I've done a lot of those. I know myself. What drives me, Henry, is momentum, is progress. And that's why that suspension thing kind of sh- w- w- hit me hard because I just had no progress anymore. Mm. Like, I don't care. I've, I've been through a lot in life, a lot. But as long as I have progress, I'm happy. Like, now I'm doing podcasts every day like crazy. So it's progress again. So I'm, I'm again being more relaxed. Uh, but when it kind of hit me hard and I had nothing for two days, it was, wasn't easy. Um, so progress and momentum is what drives me. And then I structure my day and my life around that simple fact that I know about myself. Just you love mo- you're addicted to momentum, and we will do things that will g- create it. Exactly, I, I love it. I love it. Okay, here's another fun question: If you achieved all your life goals tomorrow, what would you do next? Um, I can't because my goal is just to keep growing. Um, it's a progressive goal, so that means. I cannot just achieve it. It does not end, which is really good and bad. It's good because I've always got something. It's bad because it's dangerous when you're not happy with where you are. You're always looking for more. Mm. Um, and that's a pretty dangerous place to be because, you know, like an athlete who depends on momentum and then breaks his leg, um, that's, he's going to go through depression. Me, uh, relying on momentum and then clubhouse gets suspended, it hit me hard. If, you, if, you, if I lose my voice, it's going to hit me even harder. If I lose my ability to think in my voice, I'm pretty much screwed. Mm. Um, if I lose my ability to dance, think, and my voice, I'm completely screwed because I have nothing left. I've got work, my businesses, my personal branding, and dancing. If I lose all these, my momentum is dead. Mm. Mm. So it, 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 it's so important to to pay attention to that and keep that strong mindset. You know, it's funny. I've been. It was about four years ago. 
and I had a similar experience. I didn't get suspended from any platforms, but I had a troll come at me pretty hard. And it was, it, I was picking up a lot of steam in my business, just very similar to what you're experiencing right now. And, um, we handled it. The guy wound up being a convicted felon. So this guy had a track record, you know, a rap sheet longer than the New Jersey Turnpike. And, you know, we got through it, but I was down for the count for a few months. So I, 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 my mindset just took a huge dump and I just got so down on myself and, and I, and I got stuck and I, I had to hire coaches and therapists to really help me through that. Yeah. I had, I hired a, a, a sales coach to kind of help me get sh- stronger in my sales conversations because I wasn't making any money because I was, my head was in the shitter. Right. And then I had a, a mindset coach come in and, and really help me through that. And not to say that you need that, but I, I get it when you feel like you're being attacked and that those aren't the, 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 the what he's saying about you isn't true. Like I've known you now for like a month and a half. I mean, I remember when you and uh, Philly were doing rooms. <laughs> Right. That's how you and I. Yeah. So you and Philly were doing rooms and and I I just got pinged by one of you and I came in. There was like 20 people in the friggin room. But I, I loved your energy. I loved Philly's energy. And I just kept coming back every day. And you kept pulling me up and moderating me and pulling me up and moderating me. And I'm like, these guys are good guys. Like and then. You got, you got put in like the jet stream and you just skyrocketed. It was like, boom. but I got to say this and I will say this publicly. A lot of times when that happens to people, they forget about the people that they started with. They forget and you become unheard of or they don't reach out anymore or they I'm sure anybody listening and watching this has experienced that. I have a few friends that went they just their their careers shot through the roof and I don't hear from them anymore. But the one thing about you, Mario, no matter how big your room is, you've always clicked on me and pulled me up to stage. Always. And I'll never forget that. Okay? That means a lot to me. And I tell people all the time, don't pay attention to people's follower counts. That has no bearing on who they are as a person. You know the metric that I look for when I am looking for influencers to collaborate with? How they treat other people. And you have been a stand-up guy from the minute you got on this platform to me and to hundreds of other people, thousands of other people. Because I see your Instagram stories and I see people writing into Clubhouse on your behalf telling Clubhouse how big of a mistake this is and how this is an attack on somebody that's trying to do a good thing. So I wanted to take the time today to share that with you because when these rooms get big and it's tough to kind of rustle through all the people that are talking to share this with you. And I think it's more, I I think it means more when we do it on a platform like this where it's just one on one. But I just wanted to share that with you, dude, because I've seen your growth and you've never ever turned your back on me, Philly. And those other guys and gals that started with you. So that means a lot to us. That means a lot to us. Yeah, man. Like it's, and what's ironic is that, and not only that, man, I've never, like, I've, like, it's, what bothers me the most is I'm the person that, that I got, you know, I, I got blackmailed in my early days in Clubhouse that I haven't talked about this um, before I blew up. And I had to deal with that. Everyone just blocked me and I couldn't get into any room. Um, so I had to deal with that. I had to deal with, with rumors about me as well with the JT Fox saga. And so I've been through a lot on the platform, which is okay. Uh, and it's part of, you know, when you grow up quickly, you will you will get more attention, good and bad. Um, 
And now for this to come, you know, the the celebrity uh, millionaire Jason Calacanis to to take a hit on me because he made false assumptions. You know, I don't blame him. It's tough, but the worst thing is, you know, I can deal with all this. I don't mind. I can deal with more. But when you're silenced, like when your account just gets suspended, and I don't know how long it will take because they're very slow. It's the worst because I cannot speak up. Like I cannot create a room and talk about what happened to me. I cannot do what I'm doing. Like I'm happy to cop slack. I'm happy to to have haters. I'm happy to have people trolling me. I, I expect it. I've got pretty thick skin. Um, but the fact that it just stopped is the worst. But then I, I wanted to point first. I, I appreciate the words, man. And I'm so it's just so so humbling. And, and that's probably the silver lining in all this. I get to speak to people like yourself again on a private, you know, do these podcasts privately, etc. Before Clubhouse is back. So take that breath for a bit before continuing, get back and getting back onto that rocket ship. But what's, what's, um, what I've tried to do, Henry, in a piece of value, you know, in my rooms, I always say, I try to bring everything, give it value to the audience. Remember, I always say that one piece of value out of this story to the audience is you, t- there's a book called The Obstacle is the Way, which you've heard me talk about a lot. And I think everyone should read that, um, cause you'll all, you'll all be hit in the face. Everyone that's building something, you will be punched in the face. Um, and try to turn it into an opportunity. Turn an obstacle into an opportunity. I'll give you my example now, Henry. Um, so I had my account suspended and I had the whole Jason Calacanis saga. I didn't sit there and cop it. So there's over 2,000 messages sent to Clubhouse. Um, I'm going to make a story out of it. Um, I've spoke, I've jumped on podcasts like this one to tell my story and to give value. I built relationships with influencers again. I had a chance to speak to them privately since I'm not on Clubhouse. Um, and I could be launching my podcast, which is way overdue. And I paused it because of Clubhouse. And more importantly, I was just on a call with the BBC. Um, I'm speaking to to the Huffington Post. I'm going I'm going public with the story because the the bullying on the platform on Clubhouse, man, it's it's like Clubhouse is an extension of real life without a good system to avoid the negative side of humans. You know, if you go kill someone on the street, you go to jail. There's a system for that. You punch someone in the face, you get arrested. There's a system for that. Um, on Clubhouse, the algorithm is still very new, so there's no system yet to deal with those things. Any moderator can kick anyone out, can block someone out. That the, the algorithm needs work, and I think they need to act faster on that because there's a lot of people that are just giving up on the platform because it's becoming very, very toxic, especially as you get bigger. It's really, really tough, and I'm a good example of that, what I had to go through. Um, so I'm turning that obstacle, that problem that I had to go with, with that deal with, with the suspension, into trying to turn it into an opportunity, into a good story, into press, into podcasts. Um, maybe not as good as still being on Clubhouse. Maybe I'd definitely prefer to be on Clubhouse still and do my thing. But it's better than sitting there and, and not doing anything. It's tough, you know. I can, I can, I can. I'll admit, like this is probably the first time in living memory that I didn't want to get out of bed. That I wanted to sleep longer, so I'd have to go up there and have my account suspended because I didn't have much to do, and I, I, I had to rely on momentum. My momentum stopped. Um, oh, by the way, I'm training dancing as well. I got a festival in two weeks, so I'm training to dance as well. Um, but this is one of the few times that, yeah, I didn't want to get out of bed, and I'm sitting there watching Instagram stories of animals. To, to kind of get, let time a time pass by. And I know many people do this. I literally never do this. I don't watch movies. I don't look at Instagram, nothing. So it hit me hard, but I'm still trying to turn it into something positive as much as I can. Well, look at you. You're, you're stepping up. You're not laying down. You're getting on shows like this. You're, you're doing live streams on Instagram with people and you're still collaborating. And there's a tremendous community supporting you and can't wait to have you back. And I think there's going to be a huge... Uh, welcome back party once you, you know, once this all gets sorted. And my advice to you, my friend, is to keep doing what you're doing because you are making a, a huge impact individually, but also you're leveraging other people's influence and notoriety and, and expertise. And you're helping thousands of people. Like I've been in these bigger rooms where there was like two twenty three hundred, thirty three hundred 3,300 people in one of your clubhouse rooms. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like two, three weeks ago, we were all together in a room of 40. Now look at a guy, right? So uh, there is a question from the audience before we start to wrap up here. Uh, Joshua Easter asks, uh, tell us about the style of dance you're working on. Hey. Uh, I dance bachata, man. So I travel the world dancing bachata, which is essential. You see it on my Instagram. You see a whole bunch of them. Um, so I dance bachata. That's my, my hobby. And I travel the world. I'm going to Ukraine in like a week and a half for a festival. So I, I And then Turkey after that. So I go to festivals and dance bachata. It's the, the only thing I do outside of business, which is, again, momentum. Like always like dancing on stage, you know, people taking selfies and autographs and stuff. It's a good feeling. It's like a feeling of growth and momentum. 
So uh, that's what I dance, Joshua. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, and I'm, 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 I'm pseudo jealous because I've always wanted to learn how to dance Spanish. My, my grandmother's from Spain and I grew up listening to a lot of Spanish music as a kid. And I, I, to this day, I love, I love Spanish music. And we were uh, so funny. I was on a cruise with my wife probably six years ago and they had this, this dance club on the boat, but it was, Spanish. It was strictly Spanish, and every night they had Spanish music playing. And the 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 the, the dance experts that were coming in—they're not even experts, but they were so good. I was like, "Oh my god, I can sit here and watch this all night long." So I really respect bachata, uh, bachata and and people that could dance really good because it is a art, my friend. I freaking love it, man. It's, it's incredible. Such a beautiful, beautiful dance and beautiful music. Yeah, and you're really good at it, too, by the way. I've seen your Instagram. <laughs> I appreciate it. Man. So, Mario, what can, where can my audience follow you and continue to learn from you? Because you are – how old are you? Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm younger. I'm older than I look. Um, and and the, best place, the best place to follow me, man, is – like I'm, I'm gonna do a lot, man. I, 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 this was, this whole clubhouse thing is like a trigger. It's like the camel, the, the straw that broke the camel's back in a good way. Like I'm gonna, I'm, I'm fuming from what happened to me. I'm gonna go all out on all platforms. Like I'm gonna create a podcast. I'm gonna create more content, um, and I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna have a whole team helping me to do this. And I don't have a whole funnel. Like anyone that wants to connect to, to just watch my videos and stuff, um, you just Google me and you'll find a way to connect to me. You can follow me somewhere, um, and of course you'll find me on, on clubhouse pretty easy. Um, but um, you know, I don't have a funnel to sell them anything. It's just a way to come and listen to my content and connect. You know, me and my team respond to all the messages that we get. So if they've got any questions about Clubhouse, about me, about growth hacking, which is what I love, mm-hmm. got a growth hacking agency. You know, I'm in e-com. I'm, I'm in crypto. I've got. A, I'm a partner at a law firm. I work with publicly listed companies. So I've got a lot of companies. Anyone wants to connect, I'm always looking for business partners, etc. So just Google me and DM. Yeah, you're a sharp kid. You know, me and me and Kaylin um, did some work together a couple weeks back, and uh, we were talking about you. All good stuff. Uh, yeah, and Kaylin, yeah, is really cool, really nice guy. Yeah, and he was saying that you know, uh, Mario's one of the sharpest guys I've ever met, and I've spent enough time with you on Clubhouse to believe that, and to really see the true essence of who you are and how you treat people. And I've never been in a room, like I said before, that you had ever disrespected somebody or had to uh, get loud or lippy or, or, or aggressive with somebody. You've always shown respect. You've always complimented and you've always done the right thing. So I'm giving – I, I want to share with my audience, you have to follow this guy because he's just getting warmed up. <laughs> he's just getting warmed up and his name now is now you're talking my language man now you're talking my language we're yeah i see what's gonna happen in the next six months right so the so mario nawfall and you could get the, the the spelling of his name obviously in the show notes and things like that but um that's his name on instagram so you just search for him and you just find him because the guy's going to be doing some amazing things and Follow him anyway on Clubhouse, even though there's a temporary, uh, a, a temporary technical issue. We'll say right, um, Mario Nawfall, and go into this guy's rooms and listen and see the influence that he creates. Look at the community he's built and take notes. So, I'll leave you with that, guys. Any parting words, Mario, before we wrap up? No, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate what you're doing. And love the value you're giving, man. I've heard you before as well. I've heard you speak. So um, I think the audience is listening to you right now and listening there for a reason. So keep doing what you're doing, Henry. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. All right, guys. That's a wrap. I'll catch you on the next episode real soon. Hey, everyone. This is Henry Kaminsky Jr. again. And really quick, I want to invite you to a one-on-one consult with me right now. If you're looking for the clarity and focus you need, to build your brand. 
Over the past 13 years, I've served hundreds of entrepreneurs that have great products but struggled tremendously with articulating its value to their ideal customers. You didn't get into business to just change a few lives, did you? Your ideal clients need you. And when your brand has precision-crafted messaging coupled with beautifully thoughtful design that sounds, looks, and feels like you, they'll know you're the perfect match for them. If this is something you're struggling with, what I want you to do right now is pause this audio and go visit www.uniquedesigns, with a Z at the end, not an S, .net, and book your one-on-one console call with me. Remember, the quality of your brand will determine the quality of your clients, and the quality of your clients will determine the quality of your life.